I'm not leaving this planet without having. I need braids. I need straight teeth once, so I got them. It's like, boy, but I bitched and complained like you wouldn't believe. I said, hell no. I wanted nothing to do with them for the first month. I was threatening the damn orthodontist. I was like, dude, you got to fix this, or I'm going to come over there and I'm going to headbutt the hell out of you. They hurt bad, man. I don't know how they did it. And they're like, my little kid was wearing these things. I'm like, what? Come on, man. I'm like, hey, little kid problems. But I'm having struggles with these things. It was driving me crazy. But it'll be worth it in the end. And they look great. Well, that you is wear them they great. Say. They always say it'll look good later. They look great. You know, they, yeah, y'all have straight teeth, which is keeping my goal. But that was one of the things in the very beginning was, you know, I mean, I get it. Back in the day, I was chewing and then I was wrestling and then wrestling went into fighting and I never had the opportunity to really you know to ever get my teeth and it's funny now that I'm quote unquote not popular or famous now I want to get my teeth fixed but all these years of being on camera with this jaggle tooth and everything else you know I was like all right I'm fixing these sons of bitches once so <laughs>
Gamrot just did. Just, every time I see 155 pounds take center stage like it did, it just, I mean, I just get goosebumps because I remember when there wasn't even there. And to know that, to sit there and tell that story of literally how I created it in the UFC, it's, yeah, man, that's the legacy in itself. Yeah, such an incredible story as well. And who you just mentioned, Habib, he's going to be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame this weekend. What do you make of his career and what he's accomplished? I mean, nothing short of, of miraculous. I mean, it's just how where he came from and what he did, but just to not lose. You know what I'm saying? I don't... To come in there and have this kind of a career is sort of incredible you know what i mean because we always have bumps and bruises in mma especially every day i mean it, it, you have to be on on that time at that moment at that time in your career you know what i mean for 15 25 minutes you got to be there and as big as it's gotten now with again the magnitude and the mass you know how big everybody is at 55 but how many fights they have every weekend and stuff like that it's you know it, it's what an incredible career and when he laid down the gloves i just it is something, but now to watch him pass that on and, and take on that coaching route and stuff like that, no, Khabib's, he's incredible, man. It's, yeah, congratulations to him and the Hall of Fame, he deserves it. And looking at the current uncrowned king of the lightweight division, Charles Oliveira, what do you make of kind of his resurgence in that 155 pound division and his run so far? I think the biggest thing about him is never give up no matter what right the bumps the bruises as long as you're doing what you love and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing once you find that groove and that niche that's what's beautiful about this sport the littlest things make small adjustments and once you're on that high and how far you can take it what you can do is like he's just got a whole nother there's a whole nother level to him now and he's got that confidence behind him because he literally has that i'm the champ and he embraces it and he enjoys it i know that that weight thing that we had happen there at the end again i feel bad i don't know how that whole deal happened I'm, i don't really try to dive into the politics side of it all but to miss it like that was heartbreaking but for him to go out there and do what he did anyways he's he's incredible and that's what like i would tell anybody man if you love this sport and you just keep working 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 he is the epitome of it the guy had so many fights and for the longest time was just kind of that you would almost have called him a journeyman and then he just he just clicked and it just made sense to him and now all of a sudden he's just he's on that he's up at that level that good luck trying to knock him off because he got there the hardest way possible well a lot of fans want to see him fight islam is that who you think makes sense for him next you know and that's the one thing is everybody's kind of climbing but the, the bad part is we're kind of in that situation where the top three or four they're afraid to fight because they're like we got a bunch of these killers underneath these youngsters but i want that shot at that title because if i fight for that title it's a different style of money it's a different you know what i mean and so they're kind of holding on right so again props to everybody that's giving these youngsters the the opportunity to fight and it, do i I believe Makachev deserves it 100%. He's insane. I mean, the kid is incredible. I don't know who else wants to fight him. And that's why I'm saying you should let him do it is because he he is willing to fight anybody. And he wants to fight right here, right now. He wants to be busy. He wants to, you know what I mean? And that's it makes sense to me. I think it'd be an incredible fight. So, But I get it, right? Number two and number three sometimes, they like, what about my turn? But hey, if they're not willing to give those younger guys, who gives them the opportunity, right? And so if he can get it, more power to him. I hope he gets it. And if it is Charles versus Islam, how do you see that fight playing out? Oh, I, as a wrestler, you know, as a wrestler first, I think the biggest thing about it is I just see Makachev being too much because what will happen is, and I believe he has said it, I will go after him on the ground. I will go right after, and he's got the most submissions in the weight class. He's, you know, Olivier has got, I mean, again, he has the most submissions. He's incredible. And that's the one thing is Makachev will go right at him. So we're going to see a ground war. But every time we think we're going to see a ground war, it ends up being a stand-up battle. So, you know, but that's the one thing. I like his striking. I like his conditioning. And I can honestly see, you know, I'm excited to see this happen. If, oh, I can't. Can Makachev get submitted? I don't know. But can Makachev run over the top of him? I can see it, but I don't want to go against Olivieta because he's deserved it and he's earned it and he's such a badass. But it's so to me, because I know I'll be on the stream and I know we'll be breaking the fights down and I know we'll be talking about it. I'm just excited again to see the 155 pound division take center stage like it belongs. Yeah, definitely. Always so much going on in the 155 pound division and someone else who should be making his way back in that division that even Charles has called out not too long ago, 
uh, Conor McGregor, who do you think makes sense for him to return against? Well, see, and everybody says this. You shouldn't give Conor McGregor the t t Conor McGregor shouldn't get the title. He shouldn't get go right in for the title. But what's funny is, and this is what I tell everybody on the stream, I'm like, think about this. You have the champions calling out Conor McGregor. You got them defending their belt and they're calling Conor McGregor. So he deserves to be sitting where everybody wants him. They all want to fight him. So yes, I kind of get it in the aspect that, hey, what about get in line? Hey, what about this? But he has literally put himself in a place where again, even the champions are calling him out. So he, he does, does he deserve a title shot right off the bat? Yes. Because why? Because he has put himself in a place that nobody else has even come close to even venturing. And when you have world champions literally calling him out, then he should be fighting for the title. Well, you've accomplished so much in your career. You fought in the WEC to Pride, obviously UFC. When you kind of see the evolution of MMA, what do you think should be done for the sport to continue to evolve and improve? You know, I think like anything, we need to figure out an amateur. A, a legit amateur and I've been I always again I'm going to bring up the stream a thousand times but on the stream we're always talking because that's where I'm always I'm just I'm 100% UFC right I'm on obviously the UFC stream and I'm always talking about fighting we're always talking about, I think a legitimate amateur something where we can do every weekend and I talk about it I'll give you the idea right now it's sick but no it really is it's sick but I don't want to talk too much but what I want to do is I want to create something that will help gyms grow I want to help the sport grow and if you put together even people that had to quote unquote retire they can still fight if we change up the rules and we create this dual team aspect like in wrestling where we'd have dual matches where you would have two at each weight class you have challenge matches you build your team and you start traveling then like let's i always use this let's say alpha male and and let's say i was coaching and uriah favor had a team so we would meet up and we'd have our duel and then you could do that around, again, in the community. It would be worth having a gym. Hey, we're going to develop a travel team. We're going to develop an MMA team. With these rules, you can fight every, you can fight every weekend. It's like you, you got to make small adjustments. I'm down with no submissions on the ground, so you can wear shin pads and knee pads, elbow pads, standing up where you're boxing with takedowns, and it's all about movement, right? Like in amateur boxing, it's all about throwing straight punches to the headgear. Knockouts mean nothing. Body shots mean nothing. If you want to go pro, go pro. But what this does, it allows them to fight every weekend and so now imagine what it can do for a gym they're building their team which helps build their community and then we're out there now imagine like a state championship or something where my team goes against their team we have these dual matches like in wrestling and then we have our first ever state tournament then we have a region tournament and before you know it we've got our first ever national tournament but that could do something where even kids younger because they can wear a, a modified headgear and stuff like that if you take away the guillotine you can wear headgear if you take away certain things you got those puffy eight ounce gloves so we just take away certain submissions if you want those go pro but i think those are kind of the issues that we're looking at right ufc has done a phenomenal job of creating the, of building their platform these other mma organizations building their platform but at the bottom the amateur aspect it still needs a hug mma needs a hug especially the gyms and stuff like that so i think this would be a great way to do it but also another idea that some fighters are kind of thrown out there is open scoring do you think that should be implemented in the ufc I, I, I say it every day, and I know there are some that are against it, but what I, I think we should see the scoring. What's happening right now with the judging is it's mind-blowing, and we always laugh because there's always going to be that 30-27. No matter what, you're going to go split. There's always going to be that 30-27. And what I would like to see, again, now you go back to that amateur that I was talking about, and now imagine if you're at your gym and you're doing, you're doing a, a challenges where people are quote-unquote challenging for that varsity, and what you can do is you start having these matches. Bring me your judges. Bring me your referees. Let them ref, let them judge. Let me ask them, why did you score like that? Accountability. The fact that we are one of the only sports where you don't know the score. And the other thing is you don't deal with, like, we get paid, we get paid half. So it, it, that judging is everything to us. We, we, you know what I mean? We get a split. When we set up, we get the show. And then you have to win to get the, get the second half of that money. There's no guaranteed person. You really cost some of these kids a lot when you do this. And I would like some kind of accountability. And I know some people are like, yeah, but what happens if he's ahead in the third round and he tries to coast? What's the other kid going to do knowing he's behind? Just fold, call it a day? Or is he going to pick it up and go after him? I mean, you just make this assumption. Oh, I'm down two rounds. I'm just going to quit. Well, what happens when you're down two rounds and rest? 
wrestling and you get out there in the third. Do you go after it? Do you try to win? Of course you do. But you know where you stand because it's been getting, it's really been getting heartbreaking here at the end watching some of these judges. I just can't, it's mind blowing. You know what I mean? So I don't know the ultimate, the ultimate scoring, you know what I mean? The ultimate fix, but I think open scoring where we can see them. I like the idea of the accountability where you could literally be throwing, popping, hey, yo, what the, you know, in between rounds, what are you looking at? You know, so the crowd gets behind it, but they should have to deal with this because what they do is so much, it's got such a huge impact on the fight afterwards, again, with their person, do they get to advance to the next, their next pay cut and, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. It's, it has everything to it. And they, they, they just have no accountability. Well, you, so. Oh, no, don't ever be sorry, but you bring up such great points, and I love your passion, but for all your fans who can't wait to see more of you, and even the ones in Vegas this week, where can they find you? You know, the biggest thing is, and I know we'll start streaming again, but you can always see me 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and watch alongs on Saturday, Twitch TV slash UFC or twitch.com slash UFC. You can check me every day. Just talking about fights. So what we do normally is on Mondays, we recap the fights um, with highlights and clips, and we usually do one or two fight interviews. Wednesday, we call it WEC Wednesday, so we're showing old school WEC, and then we go off and start watching a bunch of fights. Friday, we're watching fights of fighters fighting in Saturday's fights. And then Saturday, I'm doing a watch-along. If it's a pay-per-view, we usually have guests that do the watch-along with me.